Now, 10 meters, 28 megahertz is one of my favorite amateur radio bands. And that's the whole reason why I purchased this new radio. This is an Anytone AT quadruple five N2. This is a standalone 10 meter slash <coughs> 27 megahertz <coughs> radio, which uh, I purchased off of Amazon. This radio here does uh, quite a bit and I did a little bit of research to come to the conclusion to buy this radio and I'll go through the reasons why. 10 meters is really, really active at the moment. We're getting on the way up of the solar cycle, solar cycle 25, which is causing 10 meters to be really, really open um, and active all around the world. So right now is no better time than to buy a 10 meter radio because that band is really, really going off. SSB is uh, pretty prevalent on 10 meters. FM as well, there's FM repeaters on 10 meters. There's, I think there's some satellites maybe that still operate on 10 meters as well. So it's a really, really good band. Get onto it and get onto 10 meters because um, we're having a lot of fun. But we're going to be talking about this radio today. This is a rather large radio. It's not like a smaller um, 10 meter unit. And I've got the bottom cover here that I'm just going to pop off and show you guys. Um, just disconnect the speaker. The build quality of this is actually pretty impressive compared to what I've seen. I'm uh, not pointing out that little wire in the middle there, that white wire for any reason whatsoever. I've got no idea what that actually does. So I purchased this radio mainly because I want to be listening to 10 meter FM repeaters. And I kind of wanted a secondary 10 meter radio as well, uh, apart from my IC7300, that I could sit here on the bench um, and listen to 10 meters, um, mainly during the summer, but also during these openings that we're starting to get here during Solar Cycle 25. Now, this radio itself is claimed to do 60 watts output on AM. It can do uh, 50 watts output on FM, and it can also do 60 watts on SSB. So you've got that little bit of extra power, and I put this to the test on the uh, spectrum analyzer there. You can see in the background uh, recently, and 50 watts, there we go. And I can adjust that all the way down to three watts. So that's on FM. VK7HH testing one, two, three, four, five. Let's go to SSB. Oh, hello, hello. It looks like we're getting up to about, getting up to about 70 watts or something. 70 watts peak there. Uh, and on the meter, that's uh, what it's indicating as well. One, two, three, four, five. Victor Kilo seven, hotel, hotel. It claims to do what it says to do. The thing that sold me on this, because I looked at quite a few radios, I looked at a couple of other Anytones, I looked at some Striker radios, I looked at the President radios. This radio had CTCSS built in. CTCSS tones, which you need for FM repeaters, some FM repeaters. I didn't have to get any other board. I didn't have to plug in or buy any other board. It had CTCSS built into the radio, built into the, um, to the menus, so I can just select the correct tone and uh, I'm good to go. This radio will work on a few different modes. Man, that was really loud. Uh, it works on USB, so you can go uh, sideband, SSB, lower sideband. There's also a PA in it as well. There's a PA connection on the back of the radio so that you can connect it up because most CB-esque type radios like this have that. And FM as well, So uh, and plus AM too. I do like the display. This display here is rather nice looking and I do like the fact that you've got this triple meter going on here. So you've got the signal meter. Let me just zoom up there a little bit so you can see that. You've got here the signal meters going up to 60 dB. You've got your power and then you've got your SWR at the back. So you can monitor all three of these while you're transmitting all at once, which is very, very good. Now, if you think that this radio is actually familiar, that's probably because you've seen it recently, um, maybe on social media or elsewhere. Radio Oddity have a same or similar version radio. It almost looks completely identical. They're labeling it as the Radio Oddity QT60 10 meter radio. So this is the Anytone, but they've got their uh, own Radio Oddity branded. And it's about the same price basically as this radio. So uh, if you want to get one of these, the Anytone, then there is a link in the description to Amazon where you can grab one. And there is also a link below to Radio Oddity where you can get a discount from, from them as well. Japan, 
this radio does not have any way to plug into a computer like through USB. There is a data port on the back, but I think that's just for programming. This doesn't have any way to connect to WSJTX or anything like that to be able to use it for, for digital modes. But I do have a Digi rig. I think it's Digi rig, which is coming on the way. And I'm going to see if I can interface that using the front uh, connector here on the microphone to see if I can do digital modes. Now, speaking of the microphone, this is one of the things that I, is a little bit, I don't know. It's one of these things about these radios. They use the RJ45 for, uh, or well, the RJ45 connector for their microphone. This is the same and just plugs in the front there. And this is the standard Anytone microphone that comes with the radio. I much prefer the microphone DIN connectors which you see like on the front of the icoms and also a couple of the other any tones as well because they're a little bit more um, rugged but that said this isn't too bad it's got this rubber boot over the top it looks like it's sort of half protected from being able to be pulled out so the speaker because it is underneath the radio as well it means that you've got to prop this up so that it you can hear it a little bit better and of course that's going to ruin my shot if i do that so moving frequencies you have this tuning knob it's a real tuning knob it's not a uh, channelized type of system the only annoying thing is is that as you can hear each time i change this knob is very loud for starters but so is that beep as well i haven't come across any way that you can actually turn that off maybe that's roger beep beep off oh there we go beauty 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 cq 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 let's turn the power up Victor Kilo 7, Hotel Hotel, VK7HH, VK7HH, calling CQ, 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 and listening. The radio has an easy to adjust RF power knob here, so you can adjust this on the outside. That goes up and down, so as you're transmitting, you can adjust your power. There is also an RF gain, so we've got the RF gain here on the in the middle, and I had the RF gain turned up quite a bit there, so might just uh, back that off. So the various frequencies on this radio are also broken out into bands. So by pressing the band button, you can see it changes here. The letter, so this is 28 megahertz, 28.2, 28.4, 28.6. FM repeaters on 10 meters, they reside up here above 29.6. And they're usually channelized repeaters. There's a few of them worldwide. They reside between 29.620, I think 630 is an odd repeater frequency, 640 is a main one, 50, 660, 670 and 680. This radio has uh, the repeater function, so if I press this REP button over here, uh, sorry, press and hold, you'll see here that it has REP minus. If I tap that button the, uh, the the frequency knob here I can adjust this to my shift so at the moment it's you got plus you've got minus 10 meter repeaters use a 100 kilohertz shift you can set that here by holding the menu button and TX REP is set to 0 100 so what this will do is this will shift down our frequency so when we transmit we're transmitting on 29580 megahertz which is uh, the repeater's input. Now the radio has some weird programming when it comes to the CTCSS tone option. So if you hold down mode TSQ button here, this pops up and says TSQ on, tone squelch on. So if you press this uh, the frequency knob, you can turn this on or off depending on what you want. Now if you turn this on, sometimes this will mute the radio and you won't be able to hear anything. And that's because you've got to set up your tone. So if you go into menu and hold that down, Menu option number three, this is the receive CTCSS tone. I've currently got that turned off. Menu item number four, this is the transmit CTCSS tone. So that's uh, for the tone that is transmitted from the radio. And then you've got menu item up, option number five, which is receive and transmit tone. So if the repeater doesn't output a tone, then you could find that you don't need option number three or number five. Number four, though, for you to transmit a tone to access the repeater is more than likely what you need. If you've got those other ones turned on, you're probably not going to hear anything coming out on FM. So you turn the squelch down, you won't hear sort of white noise coming through. So um, just a little tip. But uh, now that I've got my CTCSS set up, if I transmit, 
you'll see the little icon pops up there and a list of all the tones that you need are here in the back of the manual so you can see that they're basically grouped up into numbers so um, if you need that to, to program. It's got here 40 channels programmable in each band. So 40 channels every single band which are programmable. So plenty of, plenty of uh, bands to be able to program all of your favorite frequencies. So 10 meters has been a bit quiet today. So I'm gonna kind of do something here which I'm not condoning, I'm not telling you to do it, but I kind of want to see if I can receive some extra bits and pieces out of this. So now I've popped the cover off, we're going to do something radical with this little white wire here. And again, do this at your own risk, but we're going to go snippity snip. And then there is a jumper here. We're going to move this jumper from one to two to two to three. Now we've done that, I wonder what's going to happen now. Oh! Hey, it goes down a little, another digit. So now we've got some extra bands all the oh even further down. Let's just go back. So we go back to A. No K K. Oh dear, I'm gonna have to go around the horses again. G H I J K L. So A is 25 megahertz. 26, 27, 28, 29. And it also goes down to 24. So there you go, 12 meters as well. Now, obviously, not very good uh, example today because the conditions were a little bit, a uh, little bit dodgy. But when the band is open, which has been a lot lately then you can talk all around the globe quite easily on 10 meters. So that's a good one for you uh, technicians out there, perhaps in the United States. If you're a technician, you've got access to the 10 meter band and you can get on HF rel relatively easily with one of these radios and uh, you can have some global contacts and it's a whole heap of fun. Now, if you want to know what 10 meter antenna I run here at home, and in fact, it was the 10 meter antenna that I had connected to this radio today, then I did a video. It's a really easy antenna to build. Um, check it out over here. It only takes literally like 15, 20 minutes to put together and you can get on the air relatively easily on 10 meters.